This is a plate of porcini mushrooms, and this is a radiation detector. I'm going to show you why these mushrooms are radioactive, and also show you some cool ways that you can use the camera on your phone to actually see radiation particles and the path that they took. Almost 40 years ago, during a safety test at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, an uncontrolled power surge caused a partial meltdown of the reactor fuel. It melted through the reactor vessel and fell into the basement. This area was filled with water, but the water boiled and produced steam, which reacted with the zirconium in the molten fuel. This made hydrogen gas, which then exploded and sent the radioactive material from the fuel rods directly into the atmosphere. The molten fuel rods were vaporized and dispersed into the air. This cloud of particles spread to the surrounding countries and settled into the water and soil. Now one of the most dangerous elements that was released was cesium-137. Cesium-137 is a radioactive daughter product of the main fission reactant, uranium-235. Most of the soil and water that it fell on is now safe to be around since it's dispersed into small concentrations. But there's a problem when it gets concentrated again. But what could concentrate cesium from the soil? These tasty little guys here, mushrooms. Mushrooms grow right on the surface of the soil, which in this case is the worst spot to grow since the thin top layer of soil is where the contamination is with cesium. Mistaking the cesium for potassium, the mushrooms absorb it into their cells. So they're like little factories that concentrate the cesium for us. This means that even today, if you go out to pick some wild mushrooms in Eastern Europe, they're going to be radioactive. I can even prove that this is the cesium-137 in these mushrooms that's making the radiation detector click more. This is a radio code 103. Not only can it detect gamma rays, but it can give me how much energy each of these particles has as well. So it's a spectrometer. So if I just turn it on and look at the spectrum of energy, you can see that there's this natural background radiation. This is coming from the natural sources in the brick and soil and from cosmic rays literally bombarding us from space. But the point that's interesting to us now is the point around 662 kilo electron volts. When cesium-137 atoms decay, they turn into an energetically charged barium-137 atom. This barium atom only has a half-life of about two and a half minutes. Then it releases a gamma ray and goes into its stable ground state. That gamma ray that it releases has a specific energy of around 662 kilo electron volts. So notice that we don't have any peak around 662 here, but when I stick the detector in the mushrooms, you can see that a peak starts to form right here. This is crazy. What this means is I actually have material from the fuel rods of Chernobyl in my garage. All this talk about forbidden food is making me hungry. Luckily, Cook Unity sponsored this video and sent me their delicious meals. Cook Unity is the first chef to consumer platform delivering freshly prepared, pre selected meals right to your door weekly. Cook Unity connects a diverse group of talented chefs that cook delicious, inventive meals fresh every day in regional micro kitchens, not warehouse production facilities. The subscription is super flexible and you can pause, skip weeks or cancel at any time. Cook Unity chefs offer a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo and gluten free options. Today I'm going to be eating Chef Ruben Garcia's Berilla Enchiladas. Look how good that looks. I love how these literally taste like something you would get from a restaurant and not some high production facility mass produced food. So if you want to try out Cook Unity meals yourself, go to cookunity.com slash alab50 or click the link in my description and use my code alab50 to get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Now let's get back to our experiment. What's scary is that these cesium atoms aren't just in mushrooms, but they also show up in berries as well. So I have a plate of some dried blueberries here and they show the same thing, cesium-137 right here. The fact that berries and mushrooms absorb the cesium-137 so easily from the soil caused a big problem for the countries around Chernobyl. Once these mushrooms and berries absorb the cesium, they're radioactive. 
and then anything that eats them after that, like deer and wild boars, are now radioactive as well. So after the Chernobyl incident, people had to stop hunting and eating these wild animals in the area. This caused severe overpopulation of the animals in the area and completely disrupted the ecosystem and greatly affected the locals who relied on the meat. Today, the radiation is much less than it was before, but it's still there. There even had to be specific laws made for food after Chernobyl about how much radiation is allowed in food when it's sold. Now, radiation in food isn't that odd. About 0.012% of potassium found in nature is potassium-40. It can decay to argon-40 by releasing a gamma ray that has about 1460 kilo electron volts of energy. So let's see if we can detect this specific gamma ray coming off bananas, which naturally have a lot of potassium in them. Over time, we can see a small peak form right here. So these are the potassium-40 atoms converting to argon-40. Now you can see that this is a small dose of radiation, but it is there. In fact, there's an informal unit of radiation called the banana equivalent dose that compares radiation doses to the amount of radiation you get from eating one banana. Now, since you also have potassium in you, that means that you naturally emit radiation at about 4,000 disintegrations per second. So you can see that radiation is all around us. Nowadays, we can actually easily get our hands on a handheld spectrometer like this. If you're curious about this specific one, I'll link it in the description where I got it from. Just a few years ago, devices like this were completely unobtainable by the general public. But now people use them all the time. In fact, just last month, a guy in Russia was driving past a metal depot when his personal Geiger counter alarm went off. So he reported it to the authorities and they ended up finding a random capsule of cesium-137. So these are really cool to have around. But what if you don't have one or don't want to buy one? Well, it turns out you can still detect radiation simply by using your smartphone camera. The random radiation particles that can be detected with a Geiger counter will also trigger the photosensitive pixels of your camera. Normally, you can't see this because the camera's already bombarded with light from the room, which hides the signal. But if you just put some non-transparent tape over the camera, then sometimes random pixels will get triggered. Now, this is still hard to detect, but there's this neat app called Cosmic Ray. It takes a picture whenever these random pixels are triggered. So if I just watch this stream of pictures come through, a lot of times it looks like just random noise. But sometimes when the particles hit just right across the plane of the sensor, then it'll actually make a path as opposed to just a single point. So you can see a curly path just like you see in a cloud chamber. So this will detect muons, beta radiation, and gamma radiation. As you can see, this natural radiation is all around us. And most of the time, it's nothing to be worried about. But sometimes even a small radiation leak can change an entire ecosystem like it did in Chernobyl. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you consider subscribing. And thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.